So guys, I want to show you here what I've designed to um, remedy the problem that we're having. This is um, a 3D animation program and I went ahead and constructed this in this program because it was easier for me to kind of um, act more of an architect and figure out what needed to be done before doing all the work. So here we got three components here to this hinge. So, and, uh, I had to do it this way because it ended up being a bit more complicated than just thinking it out in your mind and then just slapping it together like the last one I did. This one took a little bit of thought so I kind of broke it down into here. Um, I color coded the components that we'll be talking about. First is the uh, welding of the uh, hinge of the gray one and then we have the uh, red component here and then the blue and I'm going to talk to you the reason why I had to construct this in the way that it is and how it functions. First of all, I'm going to um, hide this blue portion um, in this program um, by a fancy little button here. I can uh, hide it that way. So that kind of allows us to see a little bit more specifically what we're looking at. What I have here is some uh, a flat plate and then some angle iron welded to that flat plate and then another uh, strip of metal welded to the angle iron with the uh, bolts going through it to the other side um, as you see here well I guess it's a little hidden right there there's the uh, other side of the bolts so that's the uh, first component there and then on the top the hinge I want to get a little closer in here where you can look at it the uh, the hinge is hinging from off of this bolt here, half inch bolt, that's driven through this, um, let me show you how I design it, it's kind of like two plates welded onto the flat, top flat plate, kind of similar to like maybe a horseshoe, but with, um, as you see here, this area cut open in order for it to hinge and to have the relief it needs to be able to hinge and uh, I'm going to demonstrate that here real quick for you how that will function so right here I'm going to show you what's going on so when the actuator pulls the actuator will be from this bolt to this bolt here and it will when it comes back and forth as it um, telescopes in and out it'll cause this to hinge this way and it should be able to do a complete um, is that 90 degrees? boom boom um, to be able to go straight out towards the south as well as straight up so that should be far enough to handle a far out distance for the far winter stretch and then it should be able to hinge back to the more summer to the, and it has enough um, has enough play in it to where it'll actually go um, straight in the air, like straight in the her uh, above. So um, as I did that, I had to comp uh, I had to um, build the hinging system to be completely um, independent from each component because these two components here will be together um, but as we add the third portion and let me add that now our third portion which will hinge you know left to right in this direction I couldn't I couldn't um, bolt that to the post because then you have three components here here and then here and when you have three rotating positions what happens is not only does it when when the uh, uh, the uh, actuator telescopes out because there'd be three directions of of uh, hinging what it would do is it would cause the actuator ram to twist and as I was telling you the actuator as I was reading it says that it has no tolerance for twisting because it can it can damage the actuator so because it can't twist at all these uh, hinges have to be from two direct only two points to where it's just just straight out and in there can't be any twisting so 
So what happens to happen is this actuator can't be mounted to this first component where the gray is. It has to be mounted to where the red is, the second component, and I'm just calling it a component. And so, which would be coming from this bolt that you see here to this one here on the blue one. That way the actuator from this to there will cause no twisting in the actuator when it um, telescopes in and out. And the effect will be, um, so the, let me show you here. So we have, first of all, you know, it's out in the distance, it can hinge this way. And then independently, the other one can hinge. Uh, let's see, number three here, okay. See, this one can hinge uh, independently from what the other one is doing. Um, as I did that, um, the actuator, you have to be careful. I put the uh, bolt on this side, favoring this side of the post, because when this um, actuator comes out, the actuator, you can't let this portion here run exactly parallel parallel between the two bolts. That, that actuator arm can't be in parallel with this. It has to be a little bit out of parallel because as soon as they get into parallel, what would happen is it would lock and then when you pulled it back in, it, it, it couldn't really get it to swing back when it starts telescoping back in. So these things, you can't have this one stretch so far to where they're in parallel with the RAM because that's just what happens. They would get locked up that way. So there has to be a little bit of space out of parallel to where this thing can actually retract back in. Um, so that's why I favored this side over here as to that side because that's where it's fully extended. Uh, but when the RAM, when it's um, going to the other side, it's much more easier for it to um, as it's coming way over here and swooping over this direction, the ram will be this far in and there's no, it's, you know, drastically out of parallel with this and that's not really a concern so I, I didn't need to stick this on this side. So there's a lot of little tiny intricate things that had to be taken in consideration and that's why it actually took me a um, considerable amount of time and thought and um, engineering this hinge system to where there wouldn't be any um, pieces of metal that would be hindering like we did with the last one. Uh, there'd be free movement. Um, also I had to um, measure the rams and how far they extended and these bolts had to be put in position where they are purposely and um, because I had to take in consideration how far the ram extended out and seeing how there's two of them and these rams, one of them is about a foot and a half that extends and the other one's a little bit larger, it'll extend two feet. And uh, the two foot one, because this one has, to, the third component here in the blue has to rotate a further distance. This is the one that would receive the larger actuator where this one only has to do a 90 degree hinge. So this re receives the, uh, the, um, the uh, it receives the actuator that's smaller so I'm gonna go ahead and make the third component disappear here real quick. And again, and I want to rotate the uh, second um, component down. That to be straight up. And then I'm gonna turn on um, a makeshift actuator to show you. The actuator is kind of, this is kind of a, the look of it, if, if you remember. It's kind of like this uh, tube uh, with a square box on the gearing system and then this is the RAM portion that rams out. And uh, so I modeled this to be about a foot and a half in this program um, to give me an understanding of the dimensions and, and such of how this thing was to be designed. Um, and I did the same with um, the next RAM. So let me turn that actuator the appearance off there and then um, I'm going to now uh, what I'm going to do now is turn this third component back on and then uh, the position where I put this RAM is it's, it's furthest position 
which would be all the way this direction. And I didn't want it to go 100% this way because I wanted, again, I wanted to leave just a slight bit of tolerance for it to have an easier time to swing back. So I didn't do a, like a full like horizon shot of this. This is as far as I wanted to go because I wanted to have a little bit of ability to make it an easier swing when that's on. So I'm going to go ahead and act activate this uh, the appearance of this third actuator uh, let's see I did the wrong one I did there we go so here is the uh, other actuator here as you can see and I have it the measurements of a fully extended actuator to give me kind of a measurement an idea of um, the length and then of course when that actuator tails goes back in it it'll swing this around now these has an eye, these actuators have an eye, and they can rotate within that eye because it's not putting a twist on the on the ram. And it also has a mount that comes off, and it also has a little um, a bearing in there that'll cause this to like rotate around, you know, be a bearing to rotate around the uh, the bolt here. So, um, so when this swings in, this and it swings in this will be bolted to there and it will allow this thing to actually this thing to swing around with it and uh, I had to keep that in consideration too because with both actuators I'll just turn on the actuator see if they're not if you don't take those into consideration they will actually bang up with each other so I couldn't put the actuator on this side of the bolt because then it would come over this way it would swing as far as whacking this other one it would get in its way so I had to put the actuator on the right side of the bolt. So I had to take a lot of things in consideration within the positions of the bolts and so on and so forth. It's kind of tedious, um, but I did get a final a design on it. So um, by putting the position where it is, you, I, you can see that with um, both actuators, this is as close as they'll get to each other. And so you see that they actually have room to, you know, wrote you know to be able to swing around up and down as they go up telescope and down so now that i have a understanding of what i'm going to build now i can um now i can build it so i'm going to turn off these actuators uh the appearance of these actuators real quick where we have a better look at this so these have uh three components here there's um let me show you here I'm going to rotate this one back around in position. So there's, um, I made this with, um, also, I forgot to say, I also had to take in consideration if I was going to rebuild this before I built the other one, I would probably go with a different system than this. I have two rails on here um, because, remember, we were going with the, design of the hinge and I don't want to have to tear this thing back apart and rebuild it I'm just going to take out the center hinge out of it and then put this these crossbars to make these hinges here so I'm using what I already have uh, built um, but if I was going to do it again I'd probably redesign this third component or this top part here uh, to be less metal because it would be less expense um, it probably was I can tell it's probably not that necessary to me for you to me to use this much metal matter of fact these rails here was probably not even necessary for me to use these out, outer um, edges and so I could have built, built this to be a lot lighter than what it was um, in hindsight um, if I'm ever gonna build a second one I probably will do that a different design on this third component but as far as this hinge system um, that's pretty much well set for me which is gonna work these uh, the design on this hinge of course uh, I had to weld this arm down here in order to create a, uh, a position for this bolt to where the hinge it could hinge off of this component so that's why this arm down here is necessary uh, this little extra is not necessary I'll probably trim that down and I just never did that in 3d because I had this down here and I realized that the measurements weren't working out and I had to bring it higher up where this bolt was um, this, uh, the hinge here that I have here is simply, um, a piece of metal coming up like a horseshoe and then another smaller horseshoe inside of that with a hole in the center where the bolt runs through. 
And of course, I don't have it here on 3D this way, but you'd have to round these edges on this um, piece of metal on both of them, the red one and the blue one. That way they could have the tolerance it needs to be able to rotate through without getting a hang up on those edges there. For those who are fabricators, you probably know what I'm talking about there. So um, that's what this is. That's what another one. I've decided to do two hinges here just to give it some more stability. And then, um, so let me back this thing out real quick and um, turn the visibility off here, the third component. Okay, It'll allow you to be able to see it just a little better. I'm going to turn off the appearance of the first component where we can look at that. So that's the design I went for. Again, uh, I'll shorten this pipe up to be about the same size as that and then I'll build this. And all the material I used was material that I have to work with. So th they're all box tubing. These are box tubing, uh, two by three inch box tubing that I have in my um, scrap that I have stuff that I can use. So all of this is based off the scrap that I have outside that I can use. Um, and then uh, box tubing, angle iron, and a flat piece of uh, metal. So um, anyways, I, that's the build we're going to go with. And um, the next video you'll probably see is me uh, building what you saw here on the screen. Oh. This uh, complex little thing that you see here. So I hope you enjoyed watching. Uh, thanks for tuning into the channel. And uh, stay tuned to watch me take what you see here in, um, in the digital world and put it into the physical world.